Welcome again to the uh, Melbourne Catholic website. A very interesting interview coming up. I hope you'll stay with us. Stephen Elder, the Executive Director of the Catholic Education Commission for Victoria, has joined us at the end of, uh, Steve, what I would have to say has been a very busy week for you. Uh, it has been a... Uh, well, every week's a fairly busy week in Catholic education, uh, Shane. As you know, we've been operating schools uh, in Victoria uh, since the foundation of this state uh, and uh, since the foundation of this country. Um, and we've been providing... Uh, education. Our mission is to the poor and we've been providing education uh, to the poor in this country ever since this country was founded. Well look a couple of quick facts and then I'd like to really explore what's happened this week yeah. and what you're hoping you can maybe do to help yeah. uh, what looks to be a difficult situation. How many kids are educated by Catholic schools in Victoria and how many Catholic schools are there? Okay, so in Victoria there's 495 uh, Catholic schools yeah. and uh, across the country, so in Victoria we educate um, you know, about 220,000 students, wow. but across this country we educate close on 800,000 uh, students. So we're the second largest provider of education in this country and combined we're bigger than uh, most states uh, I when you look across the country in providing education uh, to uh, young Catholic uh, students. And I suppose it's fair to say what most people would see as a good quality education. There's no doubt that uh, when you look at all the research it certainly says that uh, Catholic schools bat above their weight. Um, our uh, academic performance uh, uh, based on SES uh, is uh, exceptional. Yes. Um, uh, evidence shows that uh, most uh, students from Catholic education go into the service industries, which is part of the mission of the church, uh, yes. is to actually uh, serve your community. So a high proportion of the young people who are educated in our system and our universities go on in service roles throughout the community. And this is about uh, continuing uh, the community good uh, that mm. we're on about. So, um, you know, our students uh, are, are less likely to be racially vilified. Research basically says that, uh, you know, we're very good around that space. Academic performance is good. We go, our students go to universities with a six-point ATAR score uh, above uh, what they do in the state system. So the evidence is overwhelming. We don't boast about that. Um, um, our view is we're doing the job mm. uh, 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 and serving our own community uh, and the families who entrust their their uh, most precious gifts, which are their students, to us. Their, their son and daughter to us. So let me uh, put this fairly bluntly, and I'm sure there's tens of hundreds of thousands of people accessing the Melbourne Catholic website every day of the week, every week of the year, who are really going to want to hear some important information from you. In the week just gone, we've probably all got a bit of a shock in terms of the way the funding might head. Can you just, in, in its simplest terms, tell us what the problem might be if Malcolm Turnbull and the government don't change their mind and why you think they're getting it wrong? Okay, so, I mean, it was a shock uh, to you, to us as well, Shane. Right. Um, I mean, given that we're the second largest provider of education in this country, We've been trying to meet uh, with the government uh, because they've been saying that they're going to bring in funding reforms. Yes. Every government, uh, Liberal and Labor, that we've dealt with in the past has always come to us and uh, negotiated uh, an outcome yes. that, uh, that meets the government of the day, Liberal or Labor, and also uh, meets the needs of our schools. We've been trying to get to uh, meet uh, Minister Birmingham and, uh, you know, he's... He basically hasn't met with us, he hasn't negotiated with us, he hasn't taken us into his trust, he hasn't shared with us what he's proposing to do. And then last Tuesday we were called to a meeting with him and it was, uh, here it is, um, effectively no correspondence entered into. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Mm. Um, and so it's in the church we we try and work with people I mean that's the nature of who we are and, and what we're on about uh, and we tried to work with the minister and the government uh, but uh, that didn't didn't happen so unfortunately you know we don't like operating in, in the public space we would much rather settle our differences uh, quietly and work with people yes um, but uh, in this instance uh, that uh, that didn't happen so our only recourse is to publicly defend our position uh, against against the government, and that's not where we want to be. 
So in doing that, have you had any moments through the week that have given you any hope that things might turn around? Um, I mean, I was, uh, having been a, a former Member of, of Parliament, um, and understanding how public debates go, my view is that, you know, common sense ultimately uh, prevails, um, and I'm hoping that ultimately, uh, you know, common sense will prevail in this situation, and the government will say, we didn't talk to you prior to us uh, delivering this policy announcement, you've got some concerns, we do want to speak to you now. But, you know, that would be an honest and open way to go to go forward. So we'll just see if that happens. I'm hopeful, and, I, and in talking to many of the coalition uh, backbenchers and senior Liberals, they're hopeful that that will happen as well. Right. So, Steve, there's a lot of mums and dads watching this in their tens and hundreds of thousands. They're all going to be saying... What is the actual problem for me sending my kids in terms of reductions or increases in fees? Okay, so what the Minister has said is, uh, and we supported his, his plan to go forward at 3.56% uh, 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 increase, uh, uh, you know, indexed over the three years of the agreement, which yes. he originally spoke to us about, but they've changed the whole uh, funding framework. And they're now making it a 10-year plan. Yes. Um, and uh, what they're doing is they're saying they're transitioning, in us, transitioning in us to this new uh, funding plan. Now, what what that's code for is there's going to be some pain for you. Um, the we're not going to give you the pain up front. We're going to move you to the pain over a period of time. So, in other words, we're going to reduce funding to you over a period of time. So they've sugar-coated the first three years of this uh, funding deal. Um, they still haven't committed to what they committed to us in the lead-up uh, to the last election at 3.56% increase. They're only giving us here in Victoria 3.5. So they've broken a commitment that they gave to us, and, and, and I supported them on this, I might tell you. They're now, uh, so the first three years will be sugar-coated. Then after that, we actually have a funding cliff where our funding uh, in real terms will go backwards. The other thing that they have said is that under this new funding uh, deal, we're actually telling you in your Catholic schools what we expect your parents uh, to pay in school fees to meet the cost of, uh, of operating uh, this parish primary school. Is that the first time a government's ever done that in your memory? Um, it's it certainly, so what they've normally done is given us the money uh, we distribute it across uh, our schools based on, on, on need. Um, and so we've been able to put the money, because we know our schools better than anyone of course. else, yep. uh, where that uh, need is. And all our schools have been happy about that. What they're now doing is saying to schools, this is how much we're giving your school, the students in your school, this is how much money we expect your parents to pay in fees to bring them up to the benchmark that we think this school can operate at. Now, in many instances, not all schools, some, all, some schools actually do, do you know, marginally well out of it. But a very large proportion of them, this will mean funding uh, increases from parents, in other words, parents' fees uh, going no, up I, 100, mm. 150%. So, you know, I was out at a school uh, yesterday uh, and their fees would have to go up um, $2,600 a year. Now, if you've got more children at that school, you can work that out. Mm. These are large dollars, and the impact on our families will be that they won't be able to afford them. We never deny anyone access uh, to our, mm. our schools, so that will have to be absorbed. Or in some instances where we have small schools, they will have to be, they may have to be closed, or we may have to cut some programs. We don't want to do that. We don't think the government wants to do that, and so we are hopeful of, um, of an outcome with the government that doesn't make that happen. One last question, mm -hmm. Stephen Elder, I'm talking to folks, uh, is there's been a story out of New South Wales that a report that they had a look at their system and it was possible that the bigger areas were getting better funded than maybe the areas that needed it most. Yeah. Can you assure our viewers that that's not happening in Victoria? Um, well, can I tell you, it's certainly not happening in Victoria. 
and it's not happening in New South Wales. What you need to understand is that that report was commissioned by Catholic Education in New South Wales. They weren't sure if uh, their funding distribution mechanism was meeting their poor schools. So yes. they commissioned uh, me to do a, uh, an initial report for them. And then uh, coming out of that, they then commissioned Catherine Greiner. Mm. And Catherine Greiner was a member of the Gonski Review panel. Yes. Um, who better to get than her to do the second uh, review? Mm -hmm. Because in New South Wales, the Catholics wanted to make sure that their funding um, distribution model was good. So Catherine Griner did that uh, review. She made recommendations, and can I tell you now, they've implemented those uh, recommendations. So this is a report that we commissioned. We acted on the recommendations uh, because we wanted in New South Wales our schools uh, to fit in with what the federal government wants in their distribution model. We've done that. Um, so all this, uh, I, I, you know, I suspect the report may have been leaked by the government to undermine us. It hasn't been uh, contextualised uh, with the media when they've put it out there. This is our report to make sure that we funded our schools in the, uh, adequately, uh, done by uh, a member of the Gonski panel, and we've now implemented those recommendations. So that's a very relevant and necessary contextualisation. Absolutely, and, and, and it has nothing to do with the, with the current uh, funding discussion. You need to know, I, you know, the Liberal Party has, you know, has always uh, supported parents' choice in education. Uh, the Liberal Party actually, you know, were the first under Menzies to actually fund Catholic and independent schools. My great uncle, Sir Henry Boldy, was one of the first state governments in this country uh, to fund independent mm. and Catholic schools. Um, I mean, it defies logic as to why um, the, the Coalition Liberal Party is going down this track. Um, and, you know, I just hope that uh, they, they put a hand out to us and say, look, we recognise there are some anomalies in this funding model. We want to work with you to get it right. Steve Elder, thanks for your time. Yeah, great, uh, Shane. Thank you.